AM time to turn our attention back to Gaelic Games and we're going to build up to the Leinster Senior Football Final at Croke Park this Sunday. Does Darren Clark have footage of the goal in Gorta Keegan though last night? No, Is no. that general neck of the woods? Exactly. A no, goal, no. A goal to, to end all games really. Like. He couldn't possibly have. We, we're, we have Dublin and Louth guests. We've, we've Jer Brennan and we have Darren Clark. Uh, good morning to you both lads. How are things? All good lads. Good morning. All good. Good morning lads. Jerry, you were, I was chatting to you yesterday over the, the WhatsApp and uh, Darren played with St. Sylvester's in Dublin so you've played against each other a few times in fact. Have we have. <laughs> yeah. I was just asking Darren there is he still going and he is in fairness to him but uh, <laughs> I'm not. Still, not able still to. plugging on. <laughs> what age are you now, Darren? Yeah, uh, 40 next month, lads. Jesus, so, uh, yeah, trying to get to squeeze the last bit of juice out of it, you know. Well, sure, Jesus, we were talking about Luka Modric on the show this morning, and LeBron James at 38 still flying. So, I mean, there's there's hope. There's always hope, Darren. There, there's hope. There's hope. Keep keep going. I heard you, you you were banging in a few goals last night, Shane. Ah, uh, just banging the one. In a few goals. Just the yeah. one. Just the one. Yeah. It was a last minute winner in into the top ends. That was well taken. We haven't spoken about that enough on the show this morning, <laughs> I don't think. We? Yeah, we got to keep bringing it up. Uh, it's just been a few times, um, lads. Really looking forward to this final. I know Dublin will be will be favourites in many people's book, but um, certainly Mickey Hart and Louth will will hope to have something to say about that. And it's no no foregone conclusion. Uh, Darren, what's the what's the feeling like in Louth? I was driving through Louth on the way back up uh, yesterday evening, and plenty of flags out. I'm sure there's plenty of excitement in the county ahead of this one. Yeah, massive excitement, Jane. In fairness, um, I suppose you look back; it's 13 years since the famous 2010 match, so it's been a long kind of road to get back to. To a final, which is great now to see, obviously, and the build-up and excitement is really good in the county. There, there's a there's a kind of a good buzz since making Gavin's come in, and they've been on a good road. Obviously, he's coming from Division Four up to Division One, and obviously the lads know that the task at hand it's going to it's not going to be anyway of the imagination an easy game or whatever, or, or, or um, you know it's going to be tough, and and we know what we're, we're up against, but. Uh, there's great excitement. There's good uh, age profile to the team, and the lads are really looking forward. To it. And as you said, you, you could see the flags and the whole town of Ardy and uh, the county is really getting behind the team, and that. So it's it's great, and it's great excitement, and it's great to finally get back to a Leinster final. It's mad because I look at I was looking at last night. I was trying to find the last Leinster championship meeting between Dublin and Louth, and it was 2019, so not that long ago. But uh, it was Dublin five goals and 21 points, Louth 10 points, like. It just speaks volumes, Darren, how far Louth have come. That 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 is, there's absolutely no chance of that happening this weekend, and the gap has been um, closed remarkably. Yeah, no, in fairness, and and like you look at kind of since Mickey has come in, the first couple of results in the first years, like the had lost obviously to Offaly uh, after extra time in, in Navan in 2020, and then 2021 we obviously lost to Kildare. So uh, to, to go on the run you're on this year, I suppose it's all been built off the back of strong league performance, like promotion, and maybe when the lads came in that they, they got a good um, building block by being in Division Four and being able to kind of put together a, a, a group of players that would be there for the foreseeable future. And uh, they've built it nicely. They've got promotion all the way through from Division Four up to Division Two, and possibly unlucky this year not to get promotion to Division One. So. Uh, the building blocks have been there and I suppose the Gavin and Mickey had come in and looked at the profile of the players and I was actually involved with the under-20s myself there for a couple of years and there's probably 12 or 13 lads in that panel at the minute and they're all good lads, like they're they're, um, they're really uh, in, into it and they're there for the right reasons and the panel has kind of gelled so much over the year as well and two good wins again, Westmead and Offaly, where be it, we probably didn't play to the expected level you feel you can get to. But uh, just to be in with a shot now of a Leinster final and playing Dublin as well is a massive occasion. So uh, it's really exciting times in the wee county. So we're, we're looking forward to Sunday. Ger, three words. Where are Dublin? <laughs> three words. Where are Dublin? Um, there, you'd be you'd be worried. Certainly talking uh, to a couple of former teammates and and and, and other Dublin supporters and lads in the club. There is probably a lack of urgency and consistency in how we're playing uh, we felt after the leash game that okay they've uh, finally switched on they're being much more direct being much more ruthless to the Dublin that we have become used to seeing and then they, they they kind of faltered again they sat back against Kildare the energy levels were low I think up until Jack McCaffrey came in at half time in the Kildare game that kind of gave us a bit of a better platform and he kind of set the example for other players to start taking men on and <clears throat> trying to turn the uh, opposition defence. So so yeah, you'd be you'd be kind of worried as a as a as a Dublin supporter. 
Um, I think Darren mentioned it like, and yourself, the gap has been significant, significantly been closed between 2019 and the game the weekend. And you just have to look to that. Uh, I suppose it was a promotion playoff to go up to Division 1 um, uh, between Loud and Dublin. A draw at half time and Dublin did push on the second half. So, so you know, that gap has closed. But if Dublin are in the humour and they're switched on, you know, they could, they could uh, put on a big score uh, on Sunday. But... Uh, you have to give a lot of respect and credit to to, to Mickey Hart and the, and the level players and the work they've done over the last couple of years. So um, even physically, from a conditioning point of view, they're able to last with the with the top teams, which which allows them to be in a position to to, to uh, um, fight for for winning uh, of games towards the latter stages. And just just on that, in terms of the Dublin coaching staff this year, you have this bizarre situation where Dublin are in Division Two. Obviously, widely expected to get out of Division Two. They're then into a Leinster Championship, in which um, you know they're practically certain to get to the final. In which case, they're into the round robin. So, like, is that part of the mindset? Whereas, like, like a horse being trained for Cheltenham, like, when do they peak here? That would certainly come into the planning, and I think a lot of counties will, will, will be trying to the top counties will be trying to figure out how. The, the, the best peak uh, uh, for this new setup um, in the years to come. So there'll be a lot of analysis and, and, and recording and reviewing of physical conditioning and and everything else. But you know, there's only <laughs> for me, there's only so much uh, uh, fitter uh, you can become when you're uh, an elite player. Uh, it is about sharpening the skill sets, the decision making. Um, for me, one of the worrying things for Dublin is is, is the amount of changes that. Uh, we see Desi uh, making whether they're our necessity uh, coupled with trying to keep fellas fresh but I think there's a lack of cohesion and, and, and kind of understanding amongst the group uh, the first 15 that does come when you get used to playing with one another and no doubt Desi and the management team do have <clears throat> one eye on the uh, uh, latter stages of the championship but at the same time it is hard just to switch it on if you don't find that bit of form and you don't find that bit of rhythm and that's where Leinster probably has been kind to Dublin over the last 10 years, uh, where we have been able to to, to uh, rack up a couple of scores, get the confidence up and be in a good position and have a good understanding amongst the group going into the uh, knockout stage of the championship. So uh, that lack of cohesion, the lack of a settled team is something that would worry me. Uh, Darren, it's been, a, it's been a funny Leinster championship for Loud so far in that the eight points down at half time to come back against Westmeath and Navin dramatically and what a comeback that was. And then almost throwing it away against Offaly. You're four points up after 62 minutes and then the game goes to extra time. And to be fair to Loud, they really pushed on in extra time and, and Sam Mullery in particular on that extra period was, was brilliant, I thought. Um, so what, what do you read into that? Like it, I guess you've seen that they can, they can come back from a deficit but they can also nearly throw away a lead as well. Yeah, no, right, Shane. Like we were commentating on the local radio on the, on the match in uh, Navin and... I suppose coming off the back of such a good league campaign, like you, you beat Kildare, you beat Mead, um, possibly could have beaten Derry and RD, went to the last game against Dublin and coming off the back of a strong league performance, you're kind of looking and potential banana skin going into the Leinster campaign with a bit of expectation on your back. Uh, and in the first half in that game, the lads were very um, flat, I suppose, uh, coming off the back of the league. And at halftime, it didn't look as if there was any way out really at all. They were playing nothing at all. West Mead were on top of their game. But the character the lads showed in the second half was something else. Like they outscored Westmead two six to two points after half time, um, and it was a fantastic win because uh, Westmead had no real answer in the second half. Um, then obviously going into the Offaly game, uh, you know there was a couple of changes made in the team, and I suppose from a loud perspective, you've kind of enhanced the uh, squad and the size of the squad and, and who's playing. So uh, the lads threw in three. Uh, kind of new fellas that hadn't played a whole pile of game time this year and then obviously we were able to extend the squad out and finish the game with an extra time but again we were lucky in that game like the Offaly I think it was Keane Farrell had a chance in the last play of the game that possibly could have won the game for Offaly and I suppose yeah, you need that little bit of luck I suppose when you're coming from uh, where Loud are coming from and but the lads showed again great character in the extra time as you mentioned Sam Roy um, kicked on four or five really good points for a game he, he, he had been for his own standards he'd been quiet um, he was outstanding an extra time Kieran Downey was excellent scored seven points from play like so 
the lads are um, operating at a, at a lot higher level than we've, we, 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 we've been at in the last number of years. And there's probably a little bit of maybe calmness with Mickey and Gavin that's been brought into the panel. And you can see that in the two results again. Westmead and Offaly, they, they didn't panic. They kept uh, playing to their system, sticking to the game plan and then seeing the game out in, in, in a very good character. And that's that's the thing, Jer, as well. Like that, you know, years ago, if Dublin played this live team, they could nearly, with all due respect, concentrate on themselves, not worry too much about the opposition, and just play their own game. But but now, as as Darren mentions, you've got players like Kieran Downey and Sam Roy who are picking off scores very comfortably, and and all of a sudden, Dublin need to have a plan for some of these loud forwards. No, okay, yeah, they, they will have a plan. That they, they, they put two man markers on 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 Downey and Mulroy. Um, Sent to Darren off air. I involved with Carlo for a couple of seasons just during COVID, and mm. I got to see Mickey and, and Loud up close. And uh, uh, both players are particularly impressive and uh, extremely comfortable footballers. And they won't be particularly phased uh, by the fact that they're playing in Dublin or again they're playing in Co Park because they'll have that uh, prior experience of the the Division Two League game. Um, from a Loud point of view. I'm sure they will have looked at how Kildare set up as well uh, the last game and while not going too far from their own setup, uh, they will have to look at how Kildare did get at Dublin, um, how they slowed the pace down, how they played to their tempo, they took the sting out of any momentum that Dublin were building and I think that's something that uh, uh, Mickey Hart as a tactician and uh, I know James did played college football with him, uh, converges in goal. He, he'd be very cute and have great game intelligence. He, he'll know when to pick up the pace or slow it down. And uh, um, I think that's something that's loud and probably go at to, to just t- tactically just to take this thing out of the game uh, and be within a fighting chance going into, into the second half. And then you're 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 back on that. You know, sometimes it's uncoachable quality that the likes of Downey and and and, and Maroy have. They're just national footballers, and they have that skill set there. But now they also have the the conditioning. Uh, they have the confidence, and they have the support of their of their management. And they will cause cause Dublin problems. Um, we've probably been a bit caught in the full back line, but Michael for Simons has uh, been missed out on a couple of games. Uh, I know he's studying. For exams, uh, uh, trying to be a doctor, so hopefully he'll feature the weekend. He should settle settle us down a bit in the in, in the full back line. But we 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 have looked vulnerable at times uh, in that full back uh, part of the pitch. Um, coupled with that, the 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 pressure further out the field uh, has been average uh, at best, um, allowing players to to get a lot of touches on the ball. And whether you're a junior footballer or senior footballer. If you give a fella uh, enough time to get a couple of touches in, his confidence will grow and uh, uh, he will uh, be able to hurt you uh, going to the direction. So there's a, there's, a, there's a couple of areas really that Dublin need to look at their full back line, those couple of uh, man-on-man matchups, but also how they're going to press the ball further out the pitch. I hope we don't sit off and and, uh, and allow, the, allow it just to build up steam and come at us. Uh, briefly, Jerry, I know a lot of your uh, former Dublin teammates have been uh, talking about this on Twitter after Den Ryan's comments uh, post Leinster semi final of a Croke Park and the home venue for the Dubs in a, in a provincial semi final. Um, what did you make of of the whole Hollow Blue? It seems to be a conversation that comes up quite often. It, it, it's an absolute advantage to be uh, playing your championship matches in a ground where you have your league games. So like that's uh, that's nobody can debate that whether you're from Dublin or, or otherwise. Um the dressing room thing, um, as far as I'm aware, it's based on uh, uh, the Irish spelling. Um and that determines what dress room you go into. So I've been in both dress rooms in the in the Hogan stand in my time. Um so was it Bolly Artley or Artley? I see there's well, Artley, yeah that's a great one. And I, I <laughs> Bolly is the town, like so. All clear is the county. I suppose fair, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, it's a, it's a, very good one. And then look at some counties. Then it could be on Corkic as well. Uh, of course, uh, it's on Lou as well. So this we're getting yeah, on Lou, so, counties you know, here now. So. On Lou is ahead of Arklia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, we'll be so, dressing so, one now on Sunday, lads. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Somewhere yeah. Here. <laughs> it's but, but but players and I, I imagine Darren would probably agree with me. Every, everyone wants to play in Crow Park uh, as a player. It's it's the the mecca of Gaelic games. You know? So it's it's uh, uh, loud would be probably slightly more advantaged to, to to be playing in a park collection or something like that mm. uh, uh, for this final. But um, it's it's just a wonderful honour and an experience as as a Gaelic footballer, hurler, or ladies player to to. 
get that opportunity to to put your boots, lace your boots on and, and play in Crow Park. But yes, Dublin are advantaged uh, um, over the years to, to have been uh, played uh, there so much in the league. It's 1.45pm starting Sunday, lads. Dublin out. Very briefly, uh, who's going to win and by how much? Jer, start with yourself. I, I think Loud can be within five or six points. Dublin to win. Okay. Yourself, Darren? Yeah, look, we're obviously we're going up with more expectation uh, than any chain. Like, obviously, you're looking for the lads to familiarise themselves with playing the likes of Dublin. It's great to kind of see them in the league competing against them so strongly. And again, you're looking for just the lads to go out and express themselves and play to the best of their ability. And let's see where that takes us. And please, God, it takes us to to, to a win, you know. Um, we'll, be there, we'll be there and hope anyway. Exactly. Well, we all know what happened the last time Lyles were in the Leinster final. Hopefully, there's no controversy this time. Um, <laughs> but, uh, lads, enjoy the final. Thanks a million for popping on this morning. Yeah, exactly. Great stuff. Darren Clark there, former Louth uh, footballer, and Jared Brennan, of course, former dub, two time All Ireland winner.